Yes, well, back with you. Jim Burns here. Hello. What we got going on here today is a Lionel 1110. It's uh, what Lionel called their scout locomotive. Uh, it's modeled after Columbia style locomotive. And uh, that's what here he wanted me just to update it, make it look more, more realistic. You know, give it some bling, as they say. <laughs> or maybe they don't say that anymore. I don't know. But anyway, uh, what he wanted me to do is to improve the running of it. And the motors that came in these were plastic. And they they weren't the most powerful thing. The lever on top of the boiler between the steam and sand dome there, that, that was your directional control. You just pushed it forward and then push it backward, but that actually moved a field instead of having an E-unit installed in there. So that was your frontwards and backwards. It was more manual, but it actually moved the field instead of reversing through an E-unit, like the later one, or the more expensive ones, I should say. But because this was an entry-level locomotive, the Scouts, and uh, so what we're going to do is try to improve it for them. Uh, this one has a headlight, but it doesn't come with a headlight lens, so we're going to do that. We're going to put a lens in. Uh, I'm going to update the motor assembly. I'm going to pull that plastic motor assembly out, and I'll show you in the next picture what it looks like. But then in the next picture after that, you'll see I'm going to replace it with the uh, another Scout type locomotive motor and it is the 2034 motor assembly much better e unit and uh i'll show you in the next pictures but you'll see as we go along what's going on so continuing on here the uh, boiler casting had some casting defects um, both cylinders had uh, missing metal some divots in them you can see right through the castings and the air tank under the uh, floorboard there the, or the walkway there that had some uh, divots in that uh, pretty good size ones too they weren't holes that people drilled or broken it was just missed by lionel and got out of the factory that way i don't know how but uh this was his childhood locomotive by the way and uh, his dad gave it to him when he was just a youngster and now he wants it to look more realistic so we're going to do that for him all right we'll go on to the next picture here okay so before continuing on with the uh, motor discussion i'll do this first this is the uh, front of the locomotive of course uh, one of the classification lights was busted off so the, I did this before I decided to do any videoing or picture taking, so that was the first thing I did was got a new casting and put it on there. Uh, you can also see here that there is no headlight lens that came with the locomotive. It did have a headlight, but just no lens. All right, and we'll, I'll just give you a close-up view on the next picture. Okay, here's just a close-up view of those classification lights. You know, put the jewels in. I got those inserted and glued in. So, at least that's dressed up there before we move on to anything else. Okay, now in this picture, one of the first things I had to do to the boiler was uh, that both screws were stripped out, so... Everything kept falling apart on them. So what I've done here is uh, I had to get some new screws and I filled everything with uh, JB Weld and sanded it smooth, drilled it with the pilot drill needed for the thread and uh, re-threaded the holes and got the screws back in. Right as rain. Now then in this picture, uh, this air tank had a big divot in it 
uh, casting imperfection and off to the right there you can see well I don't know well, you can't see it but the uh, the cylinder had a hole in it too for some reason just missing metal so anyway uh, once again our friend JB Weld came to the rescue filled everything sanded it down painted it up I just used a uh, permanent black marker and just rub it around a little bit it flattens out the sheen and uh, it blends it in pretty good I think now in this picture uh, the uh, air tank had a big hole in it too and so that one's filled and colored up with the ink marker uh, the cylinder had a big hole in it and it's just all kinds of divots and I, this was just a poor Cassie they have ways to fix it before they let it out of the factory but I don't know why they didn't uh, and they just let it go perhaps it's worth a million dollars and I just ruined it but oh well <laughs> so now we're back to the motor here's the motor assembly that comes out of the Scout uh, you can see it's all plastic frame and uh, you know it was there save some money motor assembly uh, but it wasn't very powerful it wasn't very good it wasn't very dependable either so well they they took a lot of maintenance to keep them running and to get in there and work on anything was a pain in the butt because you had to pull the wheels which is no problem if you have a wheel puller but you know most people don't have that sort of thing laying around so this one uh, got pulled out put it in the parts bin and I'll show you the uh, new assembly that I've got for it in the next picture. Much better. This motor assembly will do much, much better. Uh, it's, it's all metal case to it. It's got the E unit on it. It's much heavier than the plastic one, so the attractive effort's going to be much better. Uh, the... Uh, the E unit, its lever off to the right there, it points downward and uh, it's easily accessible from underneath the boiler shell. So it's no problem getting to it. You can see it, you can move it, and that's all you need. Uh, so we'll, we'll make a fancy plug for the top of the boiler to cover up where the slot was uh, for the old motor unit. But yeah, this motor unit here, this is going to be much, much better for him. It runs nicer. And like I say, it's so it's so much heavier than the plastic assembly that uh, it'll be able to pull more. And it comes with a headlight bracket already attached. Yeah. Booyah! And speaking of uh, that light fixture on the front of that, uh, we found this on eBay. This is a bayonet bulb with a LED in it. And uh, this will work fine. Less amp draw on the power source. Uh, more more juice for the motor. But yeah, this will look real nice. And uh, I'll give you a shot of what it looks like in the next picture here. Once it's installed. And there it is. Fits right. Fits tight. And it works. It's a beautiful thing. Pretty self-explanatory there. Push it in, you're done. Okay, we'll move on to the next picture. I'll show you what it looks like lit up. There she is in all her glory. Nice and shiny. Bright headlight. Beautiful. I just put everything, you know, just put the shell on temporarily and just to see what everything would look like. Uh, and it looks great. Very bright. I love these LEDs, I'll tell you. Now, in this picture here, you can see I, uh, this is just a side view of a previous photo, but I've test fitted the uh, motor assembly inside the shell, and I added the front and rear trucks, make sure everything fits properly, and everything, nothing's going to hit, nothing's going to rub, and everything will work fine. I, I just ran it up and back on that piece of track, just a couple times just to make sure nothing was going wrong. 
But now you can see that uh, lever that used to come up between the sand and steam domes there with the old style plastic motor assembly is, is now gone. So getting a little ahead of myself, I started experimenting with some uh, handrails. So in this picture here, I've laid the handrail out and I drilled holes first into the boiler casting. There was no handrail in his original one. And it was just cast into the boiler as a feature. So I drilled holes where the stanchions would be. I put the stanchions in and got the rod in there. Bent it at 90 degrees at the front of the boiler so it would fit in there. And that'll hold it there. And it drilled a hole into the cab so it'll slide in there. I think I used a point zero three three stainless wire, and uh, it'll never rust. So I got too excited and went ahead and did that. <laughs> but anyway, I'll put that on both sides of the boiler, and that'll dress her up even more. Uh, now, if you look closely at those wheels, you'll see something's wrong. Okay, I'll tell you. It's, the wheels aren't quartered. And they really didn't have to because the main rod from the piston, that's all it had, you know, for these scout locomotives. It just had the one rod. But I'm going to add a connecting rod. So I got to quarter these wheels, and I'll show you in the next picture how I've accomplished that. Now here where you got the uh, gear puller that I modified, made it a wheel puller. Uh, so I pulled the wheels and quartered them. And now you can see I've laid out the uh, connecting rod between the two wheels and then inserted some uh, bolts there. Now what we got to do, because this, the rear wheel is the one that gets the uh, the main rod, from the cylinder, the piston rod, and uh, we got to get that little modification there. Uh, it also it needs to turn freely around the the bolt on that rear wheel, but it also can't be pinched between the bolt and the wheel. So we got to make a bushing, and then we got to put a spacer between the rod and the main rod, the connecting rod and the main rod. And then we can put our bolt in there and that'll uh, cinch down onto the bushing, but still allow the uh, connecting rod to spin around the bushing. But we'll have a nice tight bolt holding the everything together on that rear wheel. Uh, this will make more sense as we go along once you see the finished product. but. Uh, uh, I'll show you a close-up of what I'm talking about with the bushing in the next picture. Now here, you, this is like a close-up of the uh, area I'm talking about. And inside the uh, connecting rod there on that rear wheel, you can see there's a bushing there now. And uh, what this allows our shoulder bolt to tighten down onto so the bolt is tight into the wheel, but allows all the rods to spin around the shoulder bolt. And the shoulder bolt will have a bushing, a spicer actually, uh, between the connecting rod and the main rod. And that's just to keep everything aligned with the, uh, the piston rod going into the cylinder. But anyway, uh, this will make even more sense when you see the next pictures. <laughs> But what I'm going to try and show you here is how I made that little bushing. Okay, now I've got even a closer view of that bushing inside the uh, connecting rod. And just to give you a little more clarification there. Alright, we'll go on to the next one. Alright, now I took this uh, quarter inch steel rod here. 
it's hexagon shaped uh, but I turned it down to the correct diameter and uh, what you have to do is you got to drill a hole down the center of it too so I, I don't have a real clear picture these kind of came out fuzzy I don't know why okay now here we have the uh, more progress on this bushing production <laughs> I only need two you don't need them in the front wheels because I can, I can just spin around uh, the shoulder bolt. It's a short shoulder bolt in the front set of wheels, and that's just for the connecting rod. But in the back here, you got two rods connected, so you need the bushing. But anyway, right at the very end of this uh, picture, even though it's fuzzy, sorry about that, you can see there's a hole through the center, and then I'm... Um, starting to cut it off with the uh i just use my moto tool and uh, that gets me my bushing and then finally there it is all put together you can see there's a short shoulder bolt in the front wheel there and partially hidden by the main rod there but the main rod goes back to a longer shoulder bolt and between the shoulder, or the main rod and the connecting rod is a spacer. And then uh, the bushing's hidden in there. The uh, shoulder bolt actually tightens down onto the bushing, but still allows the uh, connecting rod to spin around it, the uh, shoulder bolt. So we're all in good shape here. We got a nice, nice look to the locomotive. That updates it a little better. Makes it look more realistic. So this is done on both sides now, and uh, we'll go on from here. Well, back to the boiler shell. Uh, what you're looking at here is the slot where the former forward and reverse lever stuck up through the top of the boiler. And we need to fill that in. And you can partially see some of the handrail work I was doing. I had those stuck in there. That worked out real nice. I'll show you a better picture of the handrails later, but right now we're going to concentrate on filling that slot. And this will be the solution for that slot in the top of the boiler. What this is, is a plastic channel for a storm window and you, uh, the female side gets put on your wood work on around your window. And then this is the male side. You press this in, it captures the plastic. But we're going to modify it a little bit, cut a section off, and make it fit to our boiler slot. And this is the solution I came up with. I cut a section of that uh, weather strip. And I just painted it black and cut a couple angles on there. Just shaped it a little bit just to make it look somewhat like a plate you would see on a boiler. And uh, then on the underside of the boiler, you'll see it's uh, pushed into the slot. And I made a cut just to make it a little more flexible as it's going in and out. It was pretty stiff. So I put that cut off to the left there about a quarter inch from the left end and that just gives it more flexibility going in and easier to come out and uh, it holds fast holds long <laughs> and then in the next picture here we have uh, I added a grab iron to it and that makes it look like you know if you're up needing to get to the sand dome or the steam dome you could grab onto that hoist yourself up onto the boiler and do your work all right and uh, that's the side view of course and then here this is the front view and then on here you can also see my uh, railings are starting to take shape got to straighten them out and you know get them all attached permanently but they're starting to take shape uh, very good it's coming along real nice And then in this picture here, I'm uh, showing that the handrails are done. They're fastened to the boiler. 
But of note, really, is the uh, area between the smokestack and the steam dome. You can see there's a uh, little boss sticking up there with a hole in it. I drilled that hole because the original Scout did not come with a bell. And I'm going to add one. So that's going to be our next installation. And there's the new bell. Nice and shiny. She's looking beautiful. I just made it a press fit. Uh, I forget the drill bit size, but uh, it just came out real nice. I love it. And of note in this picture, you'll now see a headlight lens that's been installed into the front of the boiler. So there's that project done also. All right, in this picture, a little lower viewpoint, but you can see the new bell is up there, shining away. And uh, the handrail, this gives a nice view of the rod assembly there now on the side. And uh, she's coming along, she's almost finished. Alrighty, there she is. She's all lit up nice and bright here. Uh, what I did here, just as a final touch, I took a black uh, marker and highlighted the piston rod support on the cross head there. And uh, just so you could notice it moving back and forth a little better than just all the same color rods going back and forth. It just shows up better when it's running. And uh, I think I have a video here of it running. I'll post it towards the end here. And there she is, final picture. I wish these pictures were better. I, my camera wasn't doing real well. I don't know, everything was out of focus, but uh, there she is. She's all done. Uh, she looks much, much better than this picture shows, but there she is. New marker lights, new bell, new grab iron, new motor assembly, uh, new rod, connecting rod anyway. Uh, all that stuff's done. New headlight lens put in. LED headlight. It looks real nice and bright. Beautiful. And uh, to say he was happy is an understatement. He, he was just beside himself. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> he almost dropped it. He was so excited. So, but yeah, he was real happy with the results. And it made it... Uh, so much more realistic to him than what he had brought me so and it runs like a champ it just is perfect so hopefully i can find that video i'll post it here at the end of it running and just as a test track in my living room here all righty thanks for watching guys and girls